Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, we start off uh, examining developments in Kano. Well, you see the headlines speaking about different perspectives, even columnists already, uh, their columns uh, making the rounds about also uh, the Emirate Council. Let's get over to join Dr. Tijani Mohamed Nania. He joins us on the phone, actually. He's of the Department of History in Bayero University, Kano. He's also uh, the former Commissioner of Youth and Sports. Morning and thank you for joining us today. Um, what can you tell us now? Because when people read about the protests and then uh, the Emirate Council, but first and foremost, the late Emir, what can you tell us about him? Well, um, you know, on the 6th of this month, that is 6th of June, His Highness, the Emir of Kano, Alaji Dr. Adobada, died. And as the tradition lays it, immediately after the death of the Emir, a day also is sufficient for the electors of the Emirate to sit down and nominate three names of those they think are entitled to inherit the office of the Emir to succeed him in, in, in another word and forward this name to the governor of the state. And this was what happened that on Sunday, or on, uh, on Saturday, the electors in Kano comprising four senior councillors, that is the Nada Kim Kano, the Naka Aman Kano, the Saikim Bay of Kano, and the Saikim Bay of Tuta. They made and deliberated on the choice of the person to succeed His Highness as the Emir of Kano. And they went to the government house to deliver their recommendation. And the governor promised that the following day, that is Sunday, would be the time when the name one of those that was submitted could be approved for appointment. Okay, what led to the protest was in the morning around 11 or 12, before the government would make official approval, then there was information that was passed through the social media uh, alluding to the fact that one of the children of the deceased area was the one that was approved. And this was shortly followed by the national, by a, by a congressional message sent by the national, uh, by the people, the Democratic Party at the national level. Then the rumor went around that it was the eldest son of the Emir that was appointed. Before the government would make its position known, later around 3 4 in the, in the afternoon, Government officially made a declaration appointing Sanusi Nani the Sanusi, being the official person appointed, approved by the governor. This created a sort of problem. The, the earlier information and the current one released by the government, this created confusion. And some of the supporters, perhaps sympathizers of the children of the area, 
Mark went out the streets around the Emir Palace and started protesting and banning pirates in what they do. But as far as the situation is concerned, the protest was only confined to the Emir Palace along up to Nasarawa, over Nasarawa on your way to the government house. But it is not spread to other parts of the metropolis, neither did it went across to other local government within the vicinity and beyond. Well, uh, Dr. Nania, allow me to come in here. And uh, now you've given us uh, a, well, a background leading up to this particular uh, turbaning of uh, the new Emir of Kano. Uh, mm -hmm. What can you tell us as a, a historian about uh, the former Emir Adobayero? Okay. Well, the former Emir, and I did Dr. Adobayero, may Allah bless his soul, may Allah give him an internal belief, was born on 6 June 1930. He was born to his father, the Emir of Kano, Al Haj Abdullah Bayero. And he went to primary school from 1937. Afterwards, he went to middle school that is now known as Lumpur College, and subsequently to School for Arabic Studies, SAS which he completed in 1947. After completion his education there, he took up appointment with British Bank of West Africa, where he spent two years. In 1949, he reverted to work with the Native Authority and was given the position of clerk of the native authority. In 1952, he went to Institute of Education, Congo, Zaria, for to further his education. Dr. Nani, uh, return, sorry to hello? interrupt you here. Sorry uh, to interrupt you. Well, we were referring to his life on the throne. I mean, when he assumed the throne of the emirship of Kano. We were wondering... I'm coming to, I'm coming to that, but you... We, we, we don't, we don't seem... We, we, Otherwise, you may not comprehend how he was able to accomplish what he did. We, we apologize, but we don't exactly have a lot of time for that. So okay, we, okay, we okay, would okay. appreciate if you hit the nail on the head. Thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, then, since then, has it happened... By 1963, when he was serving as ambassador of Nigeria in Senegal, there was a problem in Kano, which led to the abdication of his brother, Alagisa Muhammad Sunusi. He abdicated from the throne, and the, his successor, Alagisa Muhammad Inwa, only lived for seven months on the throne. In October, Muhammad Jinnu died, and the choice now was made on Alaji Dr. Ado Bayeru. And he was sent, and he returned, and was turbaned as the Emir of Kano on the 13th of October 1963. Um, Alaji Ado Bayeru was on the throne at a very difficult time because the abdication of his brother signified a problem or a, a, a problem between the government of northern Nigeria and the ruling house in Kano. That was even what led to the abdication because there was problem between Saldona and Sir Muhammad Sunusi, the, the Emir that abdicated. So this problem now raised the opposition of the people of Kano against the 
government of northern Nigeria, which was controlled by MPC, where the Kano was predominantly an opposition party sympathizing with the NATO, Northern Element Progressive Union. So that was the situation that Adobado found himself because there, were, there was even a party, political party, that was formed in order to not only to challenge MPC, but to make sure that only the successor, the successor that will be appointed will only come from the house of Sir Muhammad Sunni.